Hey, Eric here with Third by 40 Design Workshop. Back today with a book review, actually two books, sort of a companion set. They're not new releases, but they're new to my library, so I thought I'd share a quick review of them. It's easy to get comfortable as designers and rely on familiar compositional tricks that have worked for us in the past. But falling into these familiar patterns can leave our work feeling stale and uninspired. Learning from the work and processes of others outside of our own professional orbit is a necessary part of keeping our work fresh and exploring new ideas. These two books do that for me. They're sort of like miniature form-making reference manuals. Book One's foundation is a system devised for teaching spatial manipulation by the authors while they were teaching at the Harvard GSD. The book is organized into basic formal operations, subtraction, addition, and displacement, and they're meant to set in motion the designer's work. Rather than finite forms or end products, they are the means to an end, a jumping off point. The book's diagrams are simple and they effectively communicate the transformations possible using the one word verb on each page. I view them as a writer might a thesaurus, as a way to say something more precisely, or a way to color an existing design language. It's a concise book with only a very few introductory pages of text in the beginning, and as such, it leaves room for interpretation, but equally, it leaves out some of the more complex variants of form and space making, specifically curvilinear or non-orthogonal geometries. But it certainly opens the door to those prospects with some of the hybrid compositions presented at the end of the book. The bulk of the book doesn't present the manipulations as works of architecture necessarily, rather they're organizational diagrams. And in this way, they're useful instruments for conceptual design, for diagramming. It's not difficult to envision real work evolving from each operation. And the authors do supplement with real world examples from notable architects. Conditional design is an evolution of the more abstract operative design and rightly acknowledges that the conditions of architecture are defined by more than simple volumetric manipulation. We must also consider the site, program, light, scale, circulation, and structure. If operative design is an abstract manual, conditional design grounds the abstract in the real conditions of architectural design. Now it's proposed as a design methodology, but it's difficult for me to see that here. There are no specific steps per se. There's transformations, iterations, and rightly, a testing of ideas. Now, perhaps that's because although we're always seeking a methodology, the design process refuses to be prescriptive in this way. You're free to start a design process with any variable you choose, any one you think most important, and then begin testing ideas. These books reinforce that notion. Now the books may seem to promote a kind of kit of parts design mentality. One can imagine borrowing the operations or the resultant forms and collaging them together. Now you might be thinking, ugh, is this what architecture has been reduced to, selecting parts and pieces from a catalog? But before you dismiss it entirely, I do think there's merit to it. Timothy Love wrote an interesting article in Harvard Design Magazine called Kid of Parts Conceptualism, where he talks about the value and also some of the shortcomings of this kind of approach. This was actually how I was taught when I went to architecture school. I somewhat naively fully expected to start right in on day one designing buildings, homes actually, I thought I could choose. But no, in architecture school, they start off by purging all your received architectural knowledge, your notions of what good architecture is, sort of an informal brainwashing, if you will. What you think about architecture is based on a lot of things, where you grew up, your social class, your culture, where you vacationed, all the media you consumed. In architecture school, they want to start you off fresh with first principles, introduce you to space making, rather than your baked in notions of domestic perfection per se. To do this, they arm you with a kit of parts and a composition challenge, where you can only use the fundamental building blocks of architecture, planes and piers. They give you a set of basic rules and you complete a series of abstract projects. What this does is it forces you to think about creating space first rather than the iconography or imagery of a home, for example. And so there's validity to the kit of parts approach, but not as the only approach. Architecture is the result of many complex motivators. Formal composition is but one. And as Love says in his article, architecture cannot only be about itself, as the kit of parts teaching might suggest. It must solve tangible problems. So for a kit of parts to be truly useful, it has to be informed by other meaningful ordering systems. As a pairing, 
These two books neatly address that idea. Now, without question, there's lots of obvious value here as a teaching tool, and so I think these will be most helpful for students and teachers. Having said that, I think they also have a place in the library of experienced architects too, and used as a reminder of first principles, a tool to incite new ideas, and to help counteract our own well-trod, perhaps tired, natural design tendencies. And quite honestly, that's why I picked them up. I have to admit, there's a certain delight in flipping through these, and whether that's because of their size, their ordered simplicity, or just the air of possibility they project, I think they're hard not to love. The author's apt usage of verbs throughout the book suggests these manipulations are only stops along the way, one in a series of infinite possible iterations as one digs deeper to find the proper resolution of the architectural idea. Links are in the cards. Buying through those costs you nothing extra, but it helps support these videos. So if you found anything of value here, please do consider purchasing through those. Thanks as always for coming back each week. Smash that like button below and you're subscribed, right? Hit that notification bell so you won't miss any videos. We'll see you again next time. Cheers.